reduce imprisonment rates um, by 50% by next year. Since then, it's done nothing but go up. Um, so they um, did a review due to our campaigning as a group, the three, the three organisations and the working group and other partner organisations like Amnesty, um, the government agreed to do a review of where the justice agreement was at at the end of last year and no surprise they found that they have failed to do um, anything about imprisonment rates. They now just this week came out and said that they are recommitting to do something about imprisonment rates and they did that in Parliament this week for which is a, is a good step but it's only the start and it seems to me that the short life expectancy which we all know about is the end is the end outcome, is one of the end outcomes of a hard and difficult life, as is an outcome of going into prison or coming into contact with the justice system. If your life is going okay and you've got all the advantages and you're not suffering any discrimination, you know, in many ways you'll escape the criminal justice system just like you'll escape hospital <coughs> as long as possible. But these are two things that if you are Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander, you cannot avoid someone. And if you're avoiding it, then certainly your loved ones aren't. You know, and it's that, it is that close. And I think I'd just say quickly that I got motivated to do this when an Aboriginal um, family joined the daycare that my little kids were going to when they were just very little. Um, and this woman came with her five sons. And something happened in the news about imprisonment rates, and I realised, um, and it was the closed gap time as well, and I realised that with my little son, because our sons were the same age, I had a really good chance as a white woman that my son would grow up and be okay, you know? <coughs> and then this woman's looking at having five little sons, and their chances of getting to the age of 65, you know, and being grandparents, and for her to be a grandmother, are looking a lot less. And that's only because of the colour of her skin. Well, I just want to pay my respects and acknowledge the traditional owners of this country, of this land that we meet here today. Murray Watch is, uh, was formed from the uh, group of people in Brisbane here. Some elders got together. Look, I want to name people because I'll get into trouble if I don't know them more. Um, they were just a group of people were concerned about the, the debts in custody at that time. I think it was like something like 99 debts in custody. So our people were very concerned and wanted to divert people away from custody. So they got a group of people together and formed Murray Watt. ATSI Wallace, as we call it, um, is a free legal service for Aboriginal women and Torres Strait Islander women. women. We give um, information, assistance and referrals uh, so we do legal education programs as well. We go out with, to the community and, and let them know what services are available. Uh, we do healing programs with our women. But we also promote law reform, anything that's affecting the rights and interests of our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander women and their families. As a, a public benevolent institution, um, ATSI Wallace also aims to combat racism, violence, poverty, sexism, and the discrimination of all kinds. But we also initiate strategies um, directly to the empowerment of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander women. In our new strategic plan, we've just put in place a, a, a object that um, objective that looks at uh, respecting Aboriginal women's traditional law. And I think that's really important because what we're looking at um, is how we empower women to take forward the, the development of families in a cultural context. I read about five of the old documents to do this talk today. About three days I've been reading. So much negativity. So I went back 22 years ago, was when we did the Royal Commission into Aboriginal Deaths in Custody. And we talked a lot about that. Um, the, the, the speakers before have talked a lot about that. And how that hasn't gone anywhere really. The report came out in 91. There's 339 recommendations. And only five of those specifically referred to Aboriginal women. But between 91 and 99, the number of Indigenous prisoners increased at an average rate of 8% a year. The Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander female prisoners on the national basis increased by 262%. 
compared to the rise of 185% in the total female prison population. Between 2000 and 2008, it increased to 46%. So we, I've thought about the impact of these figures on our families. The Social Justice Report 2009 that's just been released studied the, the new economic foundation of Glasgow's um, figures. And they found that the imprisonment of mothers and the state of more than 17 million pounds over 10 years by taking mothers away from their children. To keep people out of prison. So behind those service providers come, you know, those lead agencies come all of those people to the table, to the Queensland government in particular, to say enough is enough. 2001 is a very long time ago. You know, it's 2010 now. And as, you know, two important things happened this week, or significant things happened. Kevin Rudd delivered his speech, you know, on the government's progress towards closing the gap. Um, and at the same time, the Closing Gap Steering Committee released its shadow report on closing the gap. It's worth looking at both of those two things. The shadow report, I'll just read this out quote, the shadow report shows that the government has not developed a long-term comprehensive national plan to close the gap and it falls short when it comes to developing a genuine partnership with Indigenous people and their representative organisations. We all want, in 10 years' time, to look back on these last 10 years and go, no, we did it. And if we don't do it, we've got to look back and say, we're sorry. We didn't do it this time. We'll keep trying. But you have to take personal responsibility. Every single one of us in this room has a responsibility to reduce imprisonment rates and to close the gap. Nobody else can do it. Just a couple of things I wanted to add. One is that um, someone said to me, I went to three forums last year, and I've come to a, four, a fourth one today. <coughs> And what's the difference? And so I wanted to add, what is the difference? So one of the differences is that the um, Queensland government, the relevant ministers, are now very aware that there are people who are taking this issue up. To such an extent that the Premier ordered a full of, uh, total government review. Every government department was asked, was told, to get together information about what they were doing about reducing imprisonment. Now, you know, if we hadn't been doing this, that wouldn't have happened. So they all had to think about it, and as a result of the further meetings that we've had with uh, Colleen and, and Ken, and us tagging, going along and talking to ministers, my um, suggestion to each of you is that when you sign the document, if you look carefully, it actually says, I commit to three things. And I think the first thing is to let the government know that you want them to do all the things that we suggested. And the second one, I think, is that you yourself will also make some effort to be involved in this by whatever way you can. So for some of you, it will be writing letters. For others, it will be talking to your local service group, your local rotary. You know, we all each do it differently. But you're not, please, you're not just signing something and walking away. You're signing something, you're looking at it, and you're thinking, OK, let's say every month I will have written a letter, or every month I will have done one thing, OK?